Hello, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Gene Worsley. Welcome to our last session of the Miller's Don't Kick It Old School webinar series. In our final session, we're working with workflow for your school photography. And we'll be looking at tips for successful school photography workflow. That's our topic for today. Over the past four weeks, we've had a series of webinars covering various topics on school photography. We hope you've enjoyed those sessions. We are joined each week by two very experienced photographers, Neil Freed, Brian Blanken, and Carter Freed, all of the Freed Spirit Studio of Photography for Schools. Today we have joined by Neil and Brian be doing our final session for us. Neil is a photographer and owner of Freed Spirit, the premier school photographer in the Washington, D.C. area. We're also joined by Brian Blanken. Brian is also a photographer, but a partner also with Neil in the Freed Spirit business. So with that in mind, let's get started with our session. And now it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you Neil Freed and Brian Blanken of Freed Spirit. Gentlemen, you have the floor. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on, I guess, what time is, a couple of minutes after 2. Well, good evening. Good evening. This is Neil Freed. I'm Brian Blanken. Uh, thanks for joining us again. I want to thank Gene and, and, and definitely to start off by thanking Millers um, for kind of helping us do this or putting this together for us so we could have a kind of a, a, a platform to talk about kind of what we do and kind of what we're passionate about. And, and also, if I could just interject, sure. also kind of sharing our vision, which is that we, we feel that school photography is really best done by local photographers um, and that a lot of the problems people associate with school photography in terms of it being mundane and routine and green screen and not creative uh, and workflows that are just out of control um, that lended itself or lent itself for years to really really kind of the large companies doing it that in today's day and age there's no reason that independent photographers aren't photographing schools where they know the teachers they know the principals they know the students and Miller's really shared our, our, our vision and our view that if we can empower through better tools and education more photographers um, photographing more schools it becomes a win-win for everybody obviously Miller's wants to sell prints um, but the schools the, the principals the admins and, and and the students and parents most of all end up with a way better experience and a way better and a way better product yeah absolutely but I mean we've been working with Miller's for over 20 years so it's there's no reason that we feel that they're fantastic and really a a true partner in our business so if this is an opportunity for us to help them then you know we're really really happy to do that but just uh, first just a little bit of a recap obviously if, if anyone's been here uh, seen all four parts or, or that we've done um, they're either really interested or you're really waiting for us to actually say something good and this is our last chance right. um, but what we've tried to do is really talk about kind of our passion and, and, and what we want to do and doing the photography in a, in a way that's that's different and then the sales and obviously the photo day working that and and up to a kind of our workflow I mean this is kind of um, the workflow really is kind of what really makes it happen for for us I mean talk is cheap a picture is great but if you can't deliver then it really doesn't matter it's kinda of like with the wedding business we talk about you know great photographers you know I don't care how great the picture is if the client never sees it it doesn't matter right. so if we're not uh, doing kind of our job and our workflow, then really all the things that we've done before and all the things we've said really, really don't matter. So well, then, would you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you agree that even taking outdoor pictures and being very creative um, and not being very kind of routinized, that even in that scenario, taking the pictures is the easiest part of what we do? I mean, I would definitely. It was funny how that kind of came about. <clears throat> you know, I think everyone asks us all the time, "How do you do it?" and is the timing and things like that. That actually turned out to be. And since, since we do come from a photography place, and we came at it with with a fresh perspective of all the people saying you can't do that, we didn't listen or we didn't know, so we kind of did it, and that actually turned out to be an easier thing. I think we talked. I talked about this in our last session about how doing a background yearbook, sit up tall kind of thing. I think is harder. There's more things that can go bad to make it look bad, obviously, than doing kind of our our style of of photography, but um, did you? Is it, did you turn it? Is it? It's cold. It's cold. Excuse me one second. <laughs> you, you had to get this in. Hold on. Okay. 
That's now they're not going to know who's who, Brian. Oh well, <laughs> I'm the guy on the left or the right. I don't know which way you're looking. Um, but anyway, how's my hat like? So anyway, if actually if Kevin Planks out there, feel free. Under Armour, we're Maryland boys. I went to the University of Maryland. If you're listening, uh, you can feel free to sponsor us at any time. Um, so, so really, it, it, and also I hope you kind of get that what we do is about being different, about having fun. You know, we're not we don't have we're not an oncology unit. This is really school pictures in a way that are great, and that's kind of one of our underlying or our overlying messages. You mean if the kids are having fun, they're going to look good in the pictures. Yeah, what, a shock. what a shock! What a shock! So I think one of the things that kind of come could um, to get back to kind of like why are we all here? And not the bigger picture where I want you to lay down on your couch, but really kind of how did we get here? You know, we came into the to the school business kind of with an open mind and fresh and kind of, as we like to say, kind of fell into it backwards. Um, we just kind of did it and we didn't really know what we were getting into, um, which then kind of got us the way we shot in a way that kind of worked in a system that we could be happy with. But then we had to create our whole system to make that work. Um, but it also really felt that Miller's could be wanted to do a full solution. I think there's not really a solution out there. So we just started speaking just from about our passion in terms of, you know, it doesn't have to be the same way. And then we had to create a system that way. So what happened is people came to us and said at the end of our talks, whether it was PPA or SPAC, and they said, how can I buy your software? How can I um, use what you're doing? And what programs are you using? Well, we're using kind of all of our own program. And we thought we're like, there's no way we're going to sell. We're not going to be in the software business. I mean, we're, we're photographers. You know, and we kind of figured out this little thing, to, a system that worked for us. So we said, well, how can we do that in a way that makes sense? So I don't want to say that this <clears throat> next part of our, our talk is going to be an infomercial. But it's going to be a little bit of a commercial because this really is about tips for successful workflow. But it's really on how we do it because we look, we came in with a fresh mind, a fresh perspective on doing it differently. Plus, there wasn't really a program out there that really did everything we needed to do in the way that we wanted to right. photograph and and then be able to deliver. So um, in that regard, we kind of came up with with our software, which is we call PhotoForce. Right. So, and where we've come from, just, just, just so you can understand, the first school we ever photographed, um, we did kind of, um, somebody asked us to do it, and we said, fine, we'll do it. We'll show up and photograph 680 students. But we had no idea what we were doing other than that we know how to take, take really nice pictures. So we had no software. We didn't know what software was out there. We had reams of copy paper and Sharpie pens, and every student that came up, we wrote their name and did a mugshot, and then manually had to do everything. And that's probably the most fundamental basic thing that you could do. And I know there are school photographers out there that do that, and it works. And that can work up to a certain level. I don't know if it's one school or two schools or, you know, or maybe a number of students. But if you want to grow and if you want to really be able to take care of your schools, um, you're going to outgrow that very, very quickly as, as we did. The other part of it is that you need to be efficient because we're not selling portraits like somebody's coming into our studio and we're charging a thousand dollars for a portrait session and three hundred dollars for an eight by ten. We're selling school pictures at school prices. Um, even though the content of the picture is portrait quality, we still have to fit within the price structure of what parents are used to paying for schools. So we ended up having to kind of piece by piece by piece develop something that would work for us. Primarily because we take pictures outdoors and we take lots of pictures per student and we sell online. Um, we have since learned that there are some schools where one image per student and a pre-order scenario is the right approach. So we now have incorporated that for those schools. But our real bread and butter and where we have the most success and where our sales are the highest, both, both in gross sales and in percentages and participation rates, is when we do the, what we call the full Monty. Multiple pictures, outdoors, online sales, parents can see all the choices first and then purchase. And we were not able to find a piece of software that really worked well in that environment. Um, and if you were to start with a blank slate of paper and say, okay, what do I want my, my software to do? What do I want my program to look like? How do I want to work in the field? Um, let's assume that you want to maximize your sales and you want to have as many people as possible buying pictures and more than that you want to have them buying as many pictures as possible. Um, you might come in find that you're going to be in a situation similar to we are 
where you want to take multiple pictures per student, you don't want to have just one image, and you want parents to see them first because if they like the pictures and there's choices, and by choices I don't mean one picture cropped three different ways, I mean you have a close-up and a three-quarter and a full length and kids making funny faces and thumbs up and crossing up. If you have variety, and variety can even just be the same position with different expressions, but you really can kind of get out of the way and let the kids be kids and capture something of their essence, mm -hmm. then parents are apt to buy, and they're apt to buy a lot. Um, and whether you work indoors, I know there are a lot of areas where you can't because of weather or heat or, or scenery, you can't work outdoors. I use that term kind of generically for us because we do a lot of that, but we also have the same success when we work indoors on seamless paper. We don't ever do green screen at schools, and we're still trying to take 8, 10, 12 different pictures, and the sales are just as good if we're on colored, you know, six-foot colored seamless paper indoors, and we're shooting the same variety as, 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 if we're, as if we're outdoors. So when we said, what do we need our software to do to enable us to really photograph the way we want to photograph, the first thing we, we, know, we knew for ourselves is we want our photographers to be photographers, not data entry clerks. And that kind of was a fork in the road, because I know an awful lot of systems have a computer and the camera is tethered to the computer and there's a barcode reader and the student comes up with a camera card and you scan the camera card and then you scan the order and now the order and, that, and then you take one picture, but the photographer spends as much time on the computer as with the student. And we knew that for us to get the kind of results we wanted, we needed to be much more present with our subject, with the student, and not have our head down in the computer could really be present with the student looking at how is he standing, what's he doing. I think some of our best pictures are where we don't say anything to yeah, the yeah. student. Yeah. You know, we always start with what are they giving us? And then we'll say, okay, can you do this or do that if we need to? But it starts with the awareness of we want to be present with the student and we don't want to be tethered to a computer and we don't want to start the whole process with with a with a computer. So we wanted a system that would enable us to A, be flexible. We didn't want to be nailed to a spot on the floor with a wire, you know, tethered to a computer. We didn't want the student nailed to a spot on the floor. We want our students to be able to move because if they move or if they jump, or they relax. And if they relax, we're getting a natural expression. We're getting a better smile. So we wanted we wanted flexibility. We wanted the flexibility to shoot inside or outside. We wanted to be able to handle online sales, but also for schools where pre-order is is the right system. We wanted to be able to, to handle to handle pre-orders. Um, we also wanted a system that could be incredibly flexible so that no matter how the school gave us the student data list, we could handle the students coming in any order they came. Because I don't know if anybody out there ever had all their camera cards set up and the school said they're coming down by class and then for some reason they don't come by class, they come by grade or they come random. They switch when they're, you don't know or whatever. Right. So we wanted a system where no matter what the school throws at us, we're able to handle it and handle it without it being a Chinese Chinese fire drill. I mean, we actually signed a school when the year before the camera cards got shuffled somehow. And the camera day was a total disaster because they couldn't literally, they had to call in all kinds of parent volunteers to try to find the right camera card for the student because they were all shuffled. So we wanted something where that just couldn't happen to us, where we could be flexible, um, flexible no matter what. We wanted a system where if the school makes a mistake, and you want to talk about being sticky at a school, how about if the school makes a mistake on the SDL, the student data list, and they leave off a grade or they leave off a class, and we can adjust it in real time in under five minutes in the field so that it's not a Chinese fire drill. Do you think that admin is going to stick by you when you can make her look good no matter what? Um, we wanted to, to know with 100% certainty that everybody was named correctly. Because how big of a problem is it when people have the wrong names, not only from the sales side, but the, most of the schools want an admin CD and want to know that everybody's named correctly, and maybe there's a yearbook. And you can imagine, and some of you may know what happens when people are named wrong at the yearbook. We also wanted to be able to tell the school, here's who's not photographed. And we were really shocked. I mean, I remember when we started, we looked at some pieces of software, and they couldn't answer that basic question. We're done with the photo shoot. Who wasn't photographed? Right. You know, you couldn't just click a button and see who wasn't photographed. Right, because you would go to makeup, and that, and that would, from a photographic standpoint, I, because of the photography side, <clears throat> I want to know how many photographers do I need to send. How, if I have 60 people that we missed or six, that's going to really dictate, I mean, how much staff do I need? So I'm allocating and I'm showing up with the right staff, the right number. So in terms of that workflow, 
it's being efficient, and it's being cost effective for me. So that little piece is a huge piece that makes a huge difference. Right. And then you want to make sure that you're taking care of your of your admin at the school that if she needs her admin CD, any way she needs the files name, any way she needs the data file formatted, that we can get her exactly what she needs, formatted the way she needs it, named the way she needs it. Same thing with the yearbook. There are a lot of yearbook companies out there now that don't all use the PSPA standard. But you want to be able to be flexible to get the yearbook company exactly what they need, exactly the way they need it, so that so that there's no errors. Um, and then a couple of other things. As we grew the number of schools, we discovered that there were some pieces that really were missing that 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 we, we just desperately needed. Um, one was a workflow piece. You can remember what you have to do up to three or five schools. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting up to 10 schools, 20 schools, 50 schools, 100 schools, every deliverable can mean the difference between keeping that school or not keeping that school. And there's no way you can keep track of who gets ID cards, who needs an admin CD, how do they need it named, when do they need it by, all the different, is there a yearbook, what's their deadline, how does it have to be formatted. When you start looking at all those choices, it becomes absolutely overwhelming and there's no way to keep it in your, in your head. And there's not even a good way to keep it on a spreadsheet. You know, a spreadsheet will work for the 10 school level. Right. You start getting beyond 10 schools, the spreadsheet's not going to not going to do it. Plus, every school is different. That was, you know, you want to. I mean, that was one thing. Like we have, a, we have a saying in our, in our in our office. Everything's a thing. Like everything come, is a thing. Like no matter what happens. Well, if you need to change a little thing, well, that's a thing, and it, it matters. So when we set stuff up, it's it's and also what's nice is that we've used other software, whether it's any of those other things that people use. We're using our software, you know. So it's developed by photographers that we use every single day. So this is. Something that if we make a change or we wanted to do something, or a school or says, a school "Hey, we can do this. this." We just we just make it happen. So um, we're constantly um, adjusting it to make sure that we're getting the most uh, efficient use, to streamline it, make it uh, less hands, more automated, as much as we can, and that we can get the school whatever they need. And an awful lot of programs are great when everything works right, but the real problem is that often at schools, anybody who's photographed schools long enough knows, not everything works right all the time. And how do you recover? So, like when a school admin doesn't send you all the grades, and you're in the middle of photo day, you know how easy is it to recover? So we've got just an awful lot of things built in because schools have made mistakes. God knows we've made mistakes. And how do we dig ourselves out from this? So the admin doesn't have to go through 500 images and identify everybody, or God forbid, you have to redo a photo shoot, and then you're not, you know, you're just not going to be invited back to that school. So we've got safety nets and Plan Bs and Plan Cs so far on virtually everything um, because, in all honesty, we make the mistake and then we figure out, okay, how do, Let's not make that mistake how do we fix it? Yeah. Um, another thing that I was shocked when we started looking at things um, in terms of software was sales reporting. Wouldn't it be nice to know, um, you know, not only your sales per school, but sales per item and profit per item. And even more than that, how about knowing you have photographers who average higher sales than other photographers? For those of you who have multiple photographers, what do you have photographers who either ha average higher sales or have a higher sell rate, or photographers who have a very bad sell rate? Wouldn't it be nice to know what your photographers are doing? So things that, from a kind of general business perspective, from a workflow and a sales analysis perspective, um, we just found were were, were really lacking. Um, and then the last thing was that we felt it, it really needs to be simple, believe it or not. Because one of the funny things about school photography is for the most part it happens between September 1st and October 30th. So you're using a product for six, depending on how many schools you have, you're doing it maybe once, or you're doing it two or three times, or maybe you're doing it for eight weeks. But at the end of that period, you're not going to use it again for another year. And software, at least for myself, and I know I've talked about this with other people, I can figure something out on a spreadsheet that's really complicated and I'll figure it out, but if I don't do it like every day or every other day, if I come back to it a month later, it's as if I never did it in the first place. And it's the only thing I can think of that works that way, that I can yeah. kind of figure out and put a lot of time into it, and then if a month goes by, I have no memory of it whatsoever. So you need a piece of software that's incredibly easy to use, um, and and that it's not like, okay, you finally figure it out and you think you got over, over the hump, but then you don't use it for a year and then you're starting back at ground, at ground zero again. So we, because we're photographers and thinking about how other photographers, to the extent they want to use some parts or pieces of our system, how they could do that and how we could help them do that, um, 
we, we actually came up with, an, I think, a novel approach that we'll get into in a little bit, where it's, it's beyond easy to use. And just to explain it a little bit, we've prepared a, um, a little bit of a, of a, of a video, um, of kind of a video commercial, about a minute of video of, of our software that, that we call, that we call PhotoForce, and, and kind of why you may want to consider taking a look at it. Meet Jennifer. She is a great photographer who has for years built a successful wedding and family portrait business. But with the shift to digital and seemingly everyone becoming a photographer, her sales were going one way, down. She thought that there might be an opportunity to replace some of her lost sales by photographing a couple of schools. But she didn't know how to approach a school principal and the workflow seemed too overwhelming. Just when Jennifer was about to lose hope, she discovered Freed Spirit. We help photographers like Jennifer connect with schools, and we show them how they can do original, creative, contemporary photography that they will love doing, and that was written up in the New York Times as the future of school photography. We show Jennifer how to sign schools, discuss commissions, and turn schools into a reoccurring business, all with the workflow that she was comfortable doing. Since Freed Spirit handles all the back-end work, and order fulfillment. Thanks to Freed Spirit, today Jennifer's business is back on track and her sales and profits are rising. It can now be your turn to grow your photography business with complete peace of mind. If you want a guaranteed way to increase your sales and expand your business, act now and contact Freed Spirit at 301-652-5452. Okay, gentlemen, great video. Thank you. Um, so, like, kind of like life, I think um, great, a great workflow or tips for a great workflow start with great communication. And I think when you're meeting with your school, um, it's, I think it's really, the first thing really is to have that agreement or what you're agreeing to locked down in, in writing. Um, so it's very clear, it's in one place, you know all the deliverables, you know what the SDL needs to look like, you know when they need a yearbook, if they're doing a yearbook, um, if you have to give them birthday pencils or whatever, the I, school IDs, staff IDs, rain dates, makeup date, whatever you're doing, make sure it's in one place so you're looking in one place because when you have three or four different places to look, that increases your chances of not seeing it. Right. So um, we want to um, really put everything in that one agreement which then we import into our software with deadlines and things like that so then we can see it. Um, because you got to know what your expectation, what the school's expectations are in order to deliver. Without an expectation, not deliver. it's hard as I tell our schools, if I know about it and we know the date and when you need it, it really increases your chances of getting it. If you don't tell us and there's kind of a mystery about it, then chances are you're going to end up with nothing. And then well, we're all going to look bad. Kind of. And the important thing also to stress, and we didn't know this ourselves initially, is that and we've talked in the past about you've got your parents who are your clients, but you've also got your school who's your client. And your, the admin at the school, the person who's responsible for whatever they need, be it a yearbook, be it an admin CD, they need what they need quickly. I mean, that, that's just the fact of life. The sooner you can get it to them accurately, the more sticky you're going to be at that school. We went through a growing phase at one point where we had a choice to make. We can either get the orders to the parents like very, very quickly or get the things to the admin very, very quickly. And we made the, I'll be honest, we made the wrong choice. We thought the parents are paying and they're our number one customer and we got them everything incredibly quickly. And the admins really kind of suffered a little bit. And we were lucky in that it didn't cost us a school, but it could have, but, but we've learned our lesson. If, if it takes an extra day or a week to get something to a parent, that will never cost you a school. But if it takes you an extra week to get something to an admin, that can cost you a school. So you want to have everything that you've got to deliver, everything they want from you known up front. You want to have it written down and you want to have it entered with a deadline. And then you want to make sure that you're able to get them what they need by the time they need to have it or else reach out to them and say, hey, it's due tomorrow and maybe the next day. Is that a, you know, Communi communication both ways is just is just is yes. just absolutely absolutely critical to keeping the admin right. happy. So, and just kind of touching more on that communication part, one of the things that we just in terms of a tip that we kind of made the mistake and and we'll share to kind of hopefully you won't fall into that same trap is 
is we were dealing with the, whether, whether it's the admin or the principal, but maybe there was a yearbook person, maybe there's a, an athletic director. So, and everyone needs something different, but we're talking to one person, and, and we're not really clear on what the other people and need. And we think they're communicating amongst themselves. Right, and then they're like yelling at us because we're not giving what they need at the right time. So, and we're all, and, and then everyone's looking bad. I mean, our number one goal is to really make our admin, our, the person that's the decision maker, look great. So that we kind of, everything's based on that kind of, that outcome. So it's really important that up front, that when you sign the school and you set up a meeting with to find out who's involved in all the photography aspects, whether it's yearbook, sports, classes, groups, individual. Is there grandparents' day? Yeah, anything, you know, whoever, you know, you have to work with the communications, you know, whether it's an independent school, a communications director, or is it a high school Spanish teacher, or whatever it is, make sure you're, everyone's on the same page from the beginning because it's really hard to kind of fix that later. But when you go there ahead of time, you say, here's how we work. You're A, instilling confidence. B, looking super professional. You're setting yourself up for success. Those kind of things entrench you in the school. And that's, and that's everyone's goal, obviously. And then when the admin says, well, I need my admin CD, but I need the files named with the student ID number, and then underscore a last name, underscore some random character, you just say, well, that's no problem. We can handle that. Because no matter what the school can throw at you, your system is flexible enough that you can get it to them exactly the way they need it. Yeah, because I think it's, I mean, like we said, the photography part turned out to be somewhat of the easier part, um, at least for us. And I think, you know, from the people that I've talked to, um, most people are kind of either have one schools or one to five schools. Um, so they're kind of trying to figure out, or they want to shoot the way we shoot and kind of do it that way. So that part seems to be easy because that's kind of what we do. It's the other stuff that really is hard and dealing with all the pieces and treating every school individually and giving everything they want. So to do it 80% well, I mean, that's kind of great, but that doesn't get you anywhere. You need to be 100%. I mean, if it was your kid left out of the yearbook, it's devastating. So, like, it's, it's really 100% or nothing. So that's kind of what we right. set up our software to really have safety nets and catches that we know that we're not making mistakes. And if we if it misses something, then we're going to adjust our software to make it work. Because that's the whole thing is really about, like I said, keeping that admin happy. If you want to stay in the school and you make their job easier, then that's going to be easier. So you want to start successful. Give them a form. Tell them how you want the, the, um, to fill up your SDL, your student data list, to make sure that the columns are in the right place. And most times... Well, you it's get to, good to give it to them so you can then ignore it. Right, because then they're going to ignore it, and you're going to get it in totally the wrong format, but you're going to save them from themselves. Right. You know, you want to make, you want to be a solution, not a problem. So if you can say, no problem, you get the list, and you know, you want to get it, you know, ask for things weeks in advance, so then when, it, then when it's two days in advance, you end up at least getting it um, before for the photo shoot, but uh, I mean, the student data list is, is obviously the, Every, the place I mean, every, to start. Everything starts there, and, and um, anybody who's been in the business for more than a year or two has gotten very good, I'm sure, at manipulating and sales spreadsheets. That when you ask the first name, last name column, they give it to you all in one column, and, and um, just all kinds of weird characters that, that you have to strip out. Um, but just to talk a little bit about kind of what we have put together, and, and because people have asked us, can you help us, can you help us, what we've realized is that it's actually easier for us and the photographers to let us do the work that they don't know how to do and that they would struggle with and that they would either spend an awful lot of time doing themselves or they'd hire other people to do for them. Um, it's easier, and I think in, 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 a, in a kind of broad brush, Approach sense, it makes more sense that if, if are you better off spending your time on a computer with student data lists and you know trying to name student images with a program that you don't really know, or are you better off spending your time taking pictures and selling more schools or selling family portraits or doing anything else that's going to add to your top line? So what we do for our photographers, and there are photographers around the country now that are working with us. What we, what we say to them is, we can be your back office, so that it kind of hinted at it in the video. But the point is that what you are probably good at is signing schools. You know people, you know principals, you know teachers. You have entree and inroads into schools. But if you can get the student data list, 
we can take the student data list and put it into a format that you can download the camera cards, if you will, to your phone. And no matter what order the students come to you in, you do a quick search in, in Acrobat on your phone, up comes the camera card, you take a picture of your phone with the camera card on it, and then you photograph the student. And if you have two or three other photographers or friends helping you, they all have the camera cards on their phone, and they find the student name, take a picture of it, and then they photograph the student. This way, everything you need or everything we need to identify the student is on the SD or CF card with the pictures of the student. And if the student gets photographed a second or third time by a second or third photographer, they just do the same thing again. They find the name, take a picture of the camera card on the phone, photograph the student. After photo day, if you identify the best headshot per student by assigning it a star rating, everyone knows about you know the star rating system that Photoshop or Bridge or Lightroom or any or photo mechanic, any photo program utilizes. Um, we ask our photographers to get rid of the bad pictures. If the picture's out of focus, their eyes are closed, or just something is terrible, making a horrible face, we don't want to deal with uploading and, 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 and transmitting bad pictures. But if you literally get rid of the bad pictures and then assign a five-star rating to the best headshot with the best expression, the best picture that would be the yearbook picture or the admin CD picture, and from that point on, if we can do everything that you need to do, including uploading to an e-commerce site where, and then emailing the parents the password, and parents go online and they start ordering, and the money literally the next day is in your bank account because it's your account in the e-commerce site. Parents start ordering, they're paying online, the money is going to your bank account. We can then prepare a folder with all the images that are ordered from and a data file that you can download. And if you want to order from Miller's, you point Miller's School software into that folder. And literally, all you have to do is hit upload because all of the information needed in terms of what was ordered, how many, the units, the packages, the folder has all the images and the data file so that you point Miller's software to it, hit upload and it's done, that piece is done. Or we could actually even go further and, and do that for you as we do for other people and order through Miller's account so that you don't literally have to do anything. And you just tell us, is it being drop shipped to the school or is it being drop shipped to you and you're gonna take it to the school? Or what we do with the vast majority of our online orders is we deliver right to the parents which is something that the schools absolutely love because they're not involved now in handling money and collecting money and turning in order forms. And then the orders come back to the school. They've got to give them to little Johnny. Johnny puts them in the bottom of the backpack. It's now squished. So we find that parents and schools love the option where the packages or the pictures go right to the parent. And what literally we do now is when it gets mailed, the parent automatically gets an email with the tracking number. So it's kind of like if you ordered from any reputable company, you know, Amazon, you're going to get an email saying, here's your tracking number. So if, if we're doing all of this and, and, we're, even, and we're, we're mailing right to the parents, as soon as it's mailed, they're going to get a tracking number, uh, an email with tracking numbers so they can see exactly what's happening. And, and now the perceived level of service is just through the roof because within a day or two of them placing the order, Miller's is so amazingly fast that if somebody orders on Monday, depending on the time of day, um, we can order on Monday, have it on Tuesday, it could be shipped on Tuesday, um, and the parents will get an email. Now, I mean, that, that's maybe a little unusual in the height of the season, but literally things happen that quickly. Somebody orders on Monday, we process the orders on Tuesday, we have them Wednesday, by Wednesday afternoon or Thursday, within the same week, the parents are getting an email with the tracking number of their order. So the number of calls you get with where's my order or what's going on or it's been so long I haven't heard, those disappear virtually, virtually overnight. Um, so what our, what, our, what our approach when people have asked us, can you sell us your software? Can we rent your software? Can you lease us the software? When we looked at it, we realized it was almost going to be an impossibility to support people in learning how to do it, even though it's very, very, I mean, it's simple enough that we can do it. Um, it is simple. It is intuitive. But, it, but it's, it's not nothing. And to have 100% accuracy, to know that everybody is named 
correctly. You actually have to look at an, the images, and you need to be able to drill down in four different dimensions to make sure. One of the things we do is we, we push a button, and up comes a list of all the students we photographed at the school, for example, um, in reverse order of who has the most pictures. So if we're taking, say, on average, 10 images per student, and somebody has 30 images, well, chances are one of the camera cards didn't get read, and two or three students are assigned to that one name. So we're able to, in reverse order, click on the first name. It says 34 images, and up pop the first and last image of that person. Now, if it's the same person because you're looking at them, then you know he blinked a lot. We have 34 pictures. But maybe one's a boy and one's a girl, or they're just obviously two different people. Well, then you know, okay, it's very simple to scroll down, read the camera card, because all the information you need is included in the image set. It's on the SD card or the CF card. And then you just grab the pictures that are wrong, assigned to the right student, boom, you're done. So we're able to look at how many images. We're able to look at, does everybody who was photographed have a five-star image? Does everybody who has a five-star image have only one five-star image? Because if somebody has two or three, chances are they're two or three different students that just, again, the camera cards weren't read. So we've actually built a system that has tools that is not so automated that it can't get out of its own way, that somebody actually needs to operate, but they've got the tools they need to be able to quickly and efficiently drill down in three to four different dimensions so that when they're done, there is no question that everybody everybody is named properly, and it's easier for us to do this for you than it would be for us to show you how to do it and help you do it through the season, and then by the time the season ends, you got to relearn it. Now. You, you got to you got to relearn it for next year anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, I think to to kind of summarize kind of what it does is really put you in a situation to do what you do best and do what you love doing, which is really most people I've talked to are photographers, and you know I want to find people. I joke about you know. We have the three P's, which people that are passionate, professional, um, and have personality. And those are kind of the people that I'm always looking for. So if you're out there and you have that, then you can transfer that passion and your personality and take pictures that you're proud of um, that really kind of uh, connect with you and connect with your community. And then kind of all the stuff that bogs every photographer down, whether it's editing, fulfilling orders, all this, the image map, all that stuff, which is annoying stuff if you're a photographer because I don't even deal with that because my head would explode. Um, well, what was the email you got today on the wedding side? I mean, this is happening all, all over. Oh, yeah, like just like always someone's like color correction, uh, converting raw images. There's all services out there to kind of try to get you out of doing the stuff that you don't want to do. And they're, they seem to be growing and they seem to be successful because more and more photographers realize they're better off spending their time Shooting Mark and selling. Shooting and selling and marketing themselves yeah. to hotels and country clubs and party planners versus sitting in front of the computer all day. Right. So I think that if we could uh, talk about how we want to do this, we want to kind of, kind of A, the soapbox version is kind of transform the way the school photography is being done. I think the engagement and kind of all the things that we've talked about, but also put the people that, like the local people, give them opportunity and, and enable them to take pictures of their product and change it and be a really, uh, not only an advocate for doing it differently, but just really an additive to the school community and, 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 their, and their kids. Um, you know, I have kids, and I mean, your kids are a little older now, but, you know, I want my kids, every experience at their school to be a positive one, and then to walk out feeling great about themselves and not be embarrassed or, uncon or self-conscious about getting their picture taken. And that's one of the things that we really try and do on kind of a small scale, but I think when you add everything up, it makes a big difference. So. Um, you know, do do we have a solution that works? Absolutely. Is it is it perfect? No. Are we constantly making it better? Absolutely. Are we in the trenches using it every day? 100%. Is is it easy for other people to get into our system? Yeah. And one of the things that also, when we like to say you're kind of working on our team, is just some of the the issues of like having someone that's kind of been there and done that. Well, what do you do in this situation? What do you do in that situation? And that's one of the things that we've come up with is really kind of an intensive three-day workshop that we've done a couple times at our, our studio where people come in for a couple days around the country and we really do really hands-on, it's a small group, really teach you and really almost, I wouldn't say put you in the school business, but show you how we do it, the sales aspect, the marketing, the workflow, the photographing it, how we do it, the, the little tricks and things that we've learned to kind of streamline and make it great. So. 
we do that a couple times a year. We have this. So if we can get out there and kind of make a difference and kind of have more people interested in our type of photography and knowing and showing that there's a different way, because part of the reason. Can I, can I, yeah, yeah, sure. Interject for one second. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but Ralph Romagera, and I don't think I'll mind by using his name, is the past president of, of um, PPA, Professional Photographers of America. And I've known Ralph for a number of years, and the first time I met him, we had one school. Um, and he just came, actually, to a workshop. And as he said to me after, he expected to leave after the first day, because that's what he does. He goes to workshops, and he usually leaves after the first day. Um, the reason he came in the first place, he told me, was because when we met, he had 50 schools and we had one. And now he has 50 schools, and we have over 100. And he was curious, okay, what are they doing? Because he still has 50 schools. Um, at the end of the third day, when he told me that he usually leaves after one day, <laughs> his words were, that was the best seminar I've ever been to. Right. Um, we do things a little different. And, and it's not that we do them to be different. We do them, um, and they just work, seem to be different, because everybody else in the school space does them a different way. But I don't know why they do it differently, because it seems to work the way we do it. When we talk about communication with schools, Often we hear things like, oh, well, we have our photos done over two or three days. And we always just question everything. If it doesn't make sense to us, well, you know, why do you do that? Is that something that, that you all like? Does it work for your schedule? Does it work for your parents? And without exception, the answer we hear is, well, no, it's just the way the photographer wanted to do it. And we say, well, would you rather have it done in one day so there's less commotion and less scheduling? Um, and the parents don't have to worry about which child to dress up on which day, which they get wrong all the time anyway. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'd love to be done in one day. And then we come in and we're heroes because we ask the question. A lot of virtually everything we do is only because we ask the question. And you know, we're not that smart, but we, you know, we have as my father used to say, I have good common sense. You know. So we have common sense. You know, why do you do that? Does it make sense? Does it work for you? Does it work for the parents? Does it work for the photographer, for the school? And if the answer is no, we just say, well then we're not going to do it. And we little by little we find things to do that schools really, really appreciate and we're able to grow. And there's nothing we do that's so special that anybody who's watching this and has an interest in doing more schools, um, there's nothing we do that they that they couldn't do. One of the problems in when we got started in schools that we realized is that nobody wants to do school photography that's boring. Nobody wants to do school photography where it's one picture per student in front of a screen and you're like next, next, next. It's no it's not a fun way to spend your day. That's not why you became a photographer. And then you get into these workflows with green screen and different things, and it's like you hate the photo day. You hate the after the photo day. I mean, it's before like, is a disaster. You can't get the information you want. Right. It's like you know, no wonder you know, You're truly right. gifted, talented photographers aren't doing school photography. So what we've tried to do is take away a lot of those problems, so you can focus on why you became a photographer, and you can do it at a school. Isn't it great to walk in and know you've got 300 willing customers waiting for you to photograph them the way you want to photograph them? Plus, then the then you the admin are really kind of. It's not an adversarial relationship. Now you're really working together, and you're you're part of the culture. You're a true partner. We like to say we're partners with our schools to help them. So that really really makes a difference. I mean, um, I guess just to kind of wrap it up, we're kind of getting close to the end. We'll open up from questions in a minute. Is um, you can continue to do it kind of the old style way, and kind of can't figure out how to get difference. And you may do three, four schools and. That's great, but if you want to really grow and take pictures that you're proud of, ch change and have people come up to you in the street and thank you and not even know this was a possibility, then you have to look at doing it differently. You know, if you're happy with the way things are, look, we tell people all the time, look, if you have a prepay and you have 90% and you're getting that, you know, don't change that. You know, but there's going to be opportunities where you can do it differently and really maximize your sales and your opportunity, and also feel good about what you're doing and what you're providing, because that's ultimately you have to look yourself in the mirror and go, is this the kind of work I want to do? This is why I became a right, photographer. Right. You know, I mean, and then, and not now let's do it in a way that you can be proud of and have a different revenue stream that can increase and you could be, you know, have your you know, it's great about schools, they happen during the week and they don't happen on weekends and they're off during the summer. And they repeat every year. Right. So, you know, when we did like I said, we did weddings, we started we did three hundred and fifty weddings that year. Neil was freaking out, he goes, What are we gonna do next year? You know, we started with this year we started with eighty seven schools, now we're at hundred and twelve or whatever the number is. You know, we're gonna start with a Hopefully, we're going to start with 112 next year, and we're going to grow on that. So, that's really the really what we we uh, we, we try to accomplish. Um, but really, I don't think we could could have done it um, without. I mean, Neil has really been fantastic with the software, so I have to 
tip my hat to my partner. Um, but really, Miller's, um, you know, when we've, we've spoke at SPAC and PPA, they've supported us. They've helped us get, when we got going, with different school things that they knew. Um, and then we've kind of taken that ball and run with it. So we can really be a, really a full solution for, their, for, for them and for their customers that are in right. need. So we're, we're happy to, to help and, 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 and step up and kind of help people get into the, a business that they just don't know exactly what are the steps to do that. So we're happy to do that. Um, with that, I, I will definitely thank you for listening. Those of you who stayed all five parts, uh, thank you. We hope you uh, either got your nap in at this time or actually got something out of it. Right. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see, you, uh, see you on the road somewhere. And Gene, just, just, just um, one final point. Gene is at the end is going to put our email addresses up. Um, feel free. People do email us, and we really do get back to them. So if you've got a burning question. But I will say, put your phone number in your signature, please. People that send an email, and, and it's a, a beautiful email of like 30 questions, which I am a talker, obviously, that I'm ha I'd rather pick up the phone and have a conversation, and I just can't do that if no one puts their phone right. number in. And I type like this. So for me as well, um, you know, if you have one question, that's fine, but sometimes we get emails that really are quite lengthy with, with many, many, many questions, and there's just no way we could really type out a response. But we're happy to talk to you. So if you include your phone number, we'll give you a call. We can if it means scheduling a time to talk. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll, give, we'll help you get your questions answered. Yeah, I want to know what you're doing now. What's your process? I need six or seven, eight. I'm going to ask you six or seven. I mean, it's like a doctor making a diagnosis without asking any questions. Right, to be able to give you the right answer. Yeah. All right, so with that, Gene, are there any, are, are there any questions? Sure, yeah, yeah. Thanks, John, for sharing sharing it with us. Uh, I do have a, uh, some, some interest about what you've talked about here, the software, uh, your workshops. Yeah, how can people find more information about those? Are they announced somewhere on the, on, online, or do you have a website where you announce those? How, how do people go about finding out about that? Well, Gene, hopefully Miller's will help us get the word out when, <laughs> when we do these. Um, but if anybody has any interest, they should just email us, and, and we keep a list of people who've expressed interest. So when we do a webinar and we do an email blast, um, you know they're they're in, they're included on that. Best thing is just shoot us an email so we have their contact information. Plus, if people are interested in in using our system or talking about it, we do have a you know some some pricing structures and some some things that we can talk uh, to send a right, conversation send conversation going. Okay, I've got a question here. It's kind of a broad question, but I, and I think this is probably something maybe that as you talked about earlier, asking you some questions via email. But in terms of getting in school photography, how do they go about building credibility with schools? You know, how do you get that foot in the door, have credibility, as far as uh, getting started with with school photography? Well, let me take a stab at it. I I I, I think there's two there's there's two things. One is um, if you're let's so let's pretend it's somebody who's working with us in some fashion. I think we bring a little bit of, of kind of gravitas, and they could say that they're a part of working with, I mean, there are ways to say that they're a part of a bigger organization, that it's not just them on their own, that there's backup, that there's um, you structure. Know, this structure and group and software, and they're, that they're going to be blown away with, with how it's all going to unfold. They're really not out there floating in space by themselves. But the other thing is, just from a straight sales perspective, um, often the thing you worry about most turns out to be the thing you don't have to worry about, um, for one. So if somebody's really, really, really worried about that, the first thing I'd ask is, well, somebody asked you about it, um, and chances are they haven't. But let's say that you really are worried about it and you know it's an issue, and this is just for sales 101. Do not go into a meeting with a principal. Um, we say, you know, if there's a pink elephant in the room, don't ignore the pink elephant, because you're going to sit there the entire meeting hoping they don't ask you that question. And you're not going to be even present to really be in the meeting. And then at some point, you can bet your life they are going to ask you the question. And once they ask it, now you're, you know, your dress or your pants are down around your ankles, so to speak. And there's, and you really you're in recovery mode, and there's no way to recover. Um, so something that Brian, you know, Brian and I have learned is that no matter how difficult you think the question may be, you bring it up and you bring it up up front as early as you can in a way that it doesn't become a disqualifier. Um, so for example, if I was new to a school district and I had photographed no schools in that district, and I was concerned that maybe that would be a problem, I would I'd bring that up right up front and I'd say, Mr. Principal, do you mind if I ask you a question? 
I know that you're in this school district, and I, in all honesty, I've never photographed the school district. Or maybe I've never photographed the school before. And I know some people really want to work with somebody who's done it a lot, and they've got it down, and maybe, you know, maybe this stuff's a little boring, but they know, you know, they've done it a lot. Um, but other people are willing to kind of take a chance on somebody who's new and creative and really talented and really nice. And, you know, we're only talking about school pictures, and they're willing to take a chance. And I've got all this backup, you know, but I don't want to waste your time. Which one are you? Are you willing to give somebody who's local in the community a chance? You know, and, and we, I really do know what I'm doing, and I, you know, we can talk about how I know and what I know and what it would look like, but are you willing to give me a chance, or you know, should we just shake hands and part friends now? And when you ask that question, you'll be amazed at how rarely, if ever, someone's going to say, no, I don't want to talk to you. But if you bring it up front and you can frame it in a way that sounds most favorable to you, they're going to say, you're local, you're in the community, you're a talented photographer, taking pictures is taking pictures. We'll give you a chance. And even if they won't, if you bring it up front, well, now you say to them, you know, thanks for your time. When I get that experience, do you mind if I call you? And now you're above board. You're not trying to hide anything. You're not hoping they don't ask. The whole meeting takes on a different tenor. But then you walk, before you walk there, you go, hey, let me ask you one more question. If the company you're using... <clears throat> could do one thing better, you take another shot at it. Like, find out what their real issue is. So, I mean, sales is sales. I mean, right. you know, we work with it all the time. You, 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 you want to go down swinging. You know, I, but anytime you can get that out of the way up front and get to, to the real issue, because there's going to be, you have to ask the question two or three times to get to the real issue. And once you do, right. now you're making some progress. But if you bring it up first and you bring it up in the framework that works best for you, most of the time it will not be the disqualifier yeah, always, you're worried about. It's going to be something else. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. Fantastic, guys. I think we'll probably leave with that. I have your email addresses up on screen, so if anybody has any questions, you know, as far as the software, webinars, costs here, the, what we're looking at, uh, sure. be sure and email Brian, Neil. They'd be happy to hear from you and happy to help answer questions for you back with you. Just super great guys to 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 follow up. That that's important to this is is having to follow up. So I uh, appreciate it. Thank you guys for the past four weeks taking time of your busy schedules to join us. We certainly appreciate that. As we wrap up here, I would just like to say thank you for attending today's webinar and our past four sessions of our school photography series. You guys have made it so successful here. We appreciate that. We hope you found it informative, entertaining, helpful to your studio all, all the way around. So uh, uh, thanks to Neil and Brian, Cara. Uh, please express our thanks to her. Uh, we appreciate it, definitely. Yeah, but uh, uh, as always, thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and thank you for choosing Norris. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.